Budgies and Wedgies and welcome back to the channel. Today I've got something a little bit different for you and we're going to explore the crazy world of designer clownfish. Now clownfish in general have been the unofficial mascot of the saltwater aquarium hobby for basically the past two decades and they're one of the main reasons that people want to get an aquarium in the first place and I definitely fell into that boat. But what a lot of people don't realise is that through the use of captive breeding there's actually so many different colour variations of the basic Nemo that we all know and love and some of them go for a pretty crazy price and I'm going to take you through all of that in today's video but before we get into it as always let's acknowledge the traditional custodians of the land and the people that are managing our land as well. Now a lot of my channel viewers are predominantly freshwater aquarium keepers so for those of you that are seeing something like this for the first time and you did enjoy this video I'd highly appreciate it if you did want to give it a thumbs up and at the end if you wanted to subscribe I'll leave that choice entirely up to you but I say enough talking and let's have a look at some really cool clownfish. So this is the Nemo that we all know and love. However, this is also the same Nemo and the water cows in my nano saltwater aquarium are also clownfish as well. But aside from looks, the main difference here is price. The basic Nemos that we know are around 30 Australian dollars if you want to buy and keep one in your aquarium. To go a little bit higher than that, we've got the Picasso clownfish, which are around 150 Australian dollars. And then we've got the Black Storm clownfish that I have myself, which are around $400 each. But they're all the same fish, that just looks slightly different. So what actually makes them look different and why is their price so varying? Well, to give us a little bit more insight in that, I'm going to hand you over to Matt from Coastal Clownfish. Uh, my name is Matt. Um... I'm in partnership with my wife Jade and we're from Coastal Clownfish. Uh, we deal with the aquaculture of um, uh, clownfish within Australia, uh, predominantly wholesale. We do have the option for retail, but we are here predominantly to look after the, um, the aquarium industry within Australia. So we now know that the clownfish that look a little bit different are called designers, but what does that actually mean? Okay, designer clownfish are very similar to your, basically the same as your designer dogs. Uh, somewhere down the line, they've bred um, clownfish, whether it be standard, the things that can be found in the wild, and they, they, they sometimes give out a different pattern. And they take those fish, and they pair it with another one, and eventually they get all these different designer colors and, and patterns and so forth. But once you get that sort of design, um, it's really cool. It's like a, Jade, Jade mentions it very similar to um, like a kinder surprise. Um, you don't know what you sort of get. You open it up and it's like, oh wow, look what we've got. So designer clownfish aren't actually too far off from what we see in the freshwater aquarium hobby with fish like guppies, goldfish and better fish where certain traits are found and developed through selective breeding so the fish looks a certain way. And whilst the three examples that I gave are pretty cheap in the freshwater aquarium hobby purely because of how fast they breed and how easy the fry are to raise up, the same can't be said for clownfish. So a lot goes into creating a designer as such because, you know, a, a, a pair, once you pair them up, they can take up to 18 months to three years before they start laying. Um, and then you don't know what you've got. You may have done it for all too much for nothing so it is a time consuming effort. So not only is it a really long process to go ahead and breed designer clownfish, it can also be pretty expensive, especially when breeders like Matt and Jade are encountering a new strain of designer clownfish in Australia for the first time. I think it was 2019, 18, well 2018 we, we bought the uh, Black black Storms and I think they were paired number four in Australia and um, when we managed to, by end of 2018, um, have them laying. Uh, I was saying that though, for instance, when we purchased pair number four of the Black Storm, for us it was something like nearly $3,000 for the pair. So we took that risk and getting that, that could, have, that could have failed miserably. And once they've bred these fish, there's a lot of things that come into consideration when they go ahead and decide the price tag that these fish actually sell for. Probably really supply and demand. So supply and demand uh, would determine a lot of the value of a fish. And we were the first in Australia to actually produce the black storm, uh, probably mock storm, super storm, snowstorms. But um, so they had to fetch a price tag at the time they knew no one else was doing it. So um, it, they were the hot thing at the time. Um, 
uh, as people probably get hold of a pair and maybe learn how to do it and so forth, the price is driven down and the demand isn't quite as there for different types. Demand can be necessary, not what's new, but what is the in thing. Like car sales just seem to never die off. They're always a demand. And the most common question we get asked for is um, Picasso's. So uh, they're still the most common, probably the most common fish aside from the um, uh, the standard Ocellaris. It is honestly quite interesting to see the market around fancy clownfish evolve and change so much. I remember a few years back when the Black Storm clownfish were first introduced, they were retailing for around $800 per juvenile fish, and the boom for them was absolutely crazy. From that, you got a ton of new variants like Mocha Storms, Orange Storms, Snow Storms, and just a whole array of different weird and wavy looking clownfish patterns. One of the things that I didn't realize, aside from the demand aspect of clownfish was actually the amount of time and effort that is involved with raising designer clownfish to sellable size. Man, it's like it's kind of one of those things where if you kind of knew the um, the speed humps you go through to get where, for instance, we are now, you probably wouldn't do it. Um, for instance, like Jade and I, we haven't had a holiday in eight years, man, and we, we hardly get a day off. Um, it just, it's ongoing. Um, you know, you're working together, um, you've got power issues, you, but every issue we've, we've sort of um, combated, we've sort of put something in place to rectify it. You know, like uh, things like the, the power trips out and you don't know because it's like three o'clock in the morning and so I'll put a horn in place, SMS modules, pumps failing, I'll know when a pump fails, when heaters fail. So you've got to put all these sort of things in place. Otherwise, dude, you, just, you just blow your, blow your dough and man, it just it's ongoing. Um, uh, the time frame. I've still got to, I've still got to work nights because uh, you know the, you don't make a huge amount of money from clowns. So, um, but one day. So if you didn't catch that part at the end, Matt was saying that he still does work a night job. And whilst it might seem like you could make a full-time wage of selling these at times crazily expensive fish, it really isn't when you consider all of the running costs and time that's involved to raise just a single group of these fish to go ahead and sell. And if you are considering to breed fancy clownfish yourself, here's some of Matt's thoughts on that. Yep. So a lot of people will have a go at trying to breed clowns and it's, you know, it's, it's not a bad thing to have a, have a go at. Um, but before you have a try, just have a think of what are you going to do with those clowns once you can get them to a point? Because the biggest problem we have is um, people will have a go and they might have some success. Awesome. Congratulations. Um, but what do you do with those fish afterwards? Sometimes you get fish that might be a little bit um, different, let's say different to other fish. Um, and they may not need to um, uh, make it through to the selling process. So they need to sort of... Um, uh, find the way out of the industry um, and that's the hard part and that's just part and parcel of being a breeder but also pricing if a fish retails for something like um, you know like your black storm they might be like four or five hundred dollars still uh, a, a fish and you're breeding them and you're only doing fifty dollars at some stage someone who's doing that for a living may not be able to survive on that so some of the things we need to sort of look at um, as far as together for the industry um, and that's why we like to try to support the, um, uh, the shops. The humbleness that Matt shows is honestly really astounding. And the passion that he has for the quality of fish that he's producing, and also just this overall love that he has for supporting the Australian aquarium industry is incredibly inspiring. The industry is small, but with people like Matt and Jay, it really can go to great places. Now, if you are looking to get a beautiful centerpiece pair of clownfish for your saltwater aquarium, and you wanted to go ahead and support breeders like Matt and Jade, this is how you can get in touch with them to get your pair of clownfish fish some uh enthusiasts uh like to pick and choose a, a, a fish so everything's done through either email uh, instagram or pref preferably through facebook messenger we cater to everyone so basically when you buy from coastal clownfish you don't just get a clown you get a, an, act a, an actual experience whether you're a shop you get the experience whether you're a retail customer you get an ex experience but we also have a price structure that we don't um uh, we don't compete with shops. So although we do retail, we do not compete with shops. So if you're the kind of thing, and you know, let's go to a breeder and get a cheap fish, uh, we may not be your guy. So, um, uh, but you will get an experience and you will get the fish you like and it'll be a cracking fish. 
Before I go ahead and show you my beautiful pair of Black Storm Clownfish, I did want to go ahead and mention that this video is in no way, shape or form sponsored by Coastal Clownfish. I only approached them purely because I could get some sort of expert perspective on this video topic that I've wanted to make for quite some time. But going through this journey and understanding the world of designer clownfish and how much time, effort and passion is put in to produce as little as two fish really makes me appreciate my clownfish all that much more. But now let's go ahead and have a closer look at my nano saltwater aquarium and I'll introduce you to Daisy and Angus, my beautiful pair of black storm clownfish. Now I was honestly thinking to give them some more electrical names because, you know, black storm. However, they really do look like cows and I feel like they should have just been called like cow clownfish or something. And uh, oh my God, I love these guys. Black storms, when I first saw them, like I mentioned earlier in this video, were a fish that was almost like just electri electrifying, see what I did there? But it was just something that seemed too good to be true, you know, they, they didn't seem real. But actually seeing these fish in person is, especially for the first time, is honestly just breathtaking. To see the absolute contrast of black and white and the way their patterning is across their body is something that I was almost like love at first sight when I saw them and I knew that I had to have them. And through the few years that I've been keeping an eye on the market of Black Storm Clownfish, they have slightly come down in price. Uh, actually, they've come down in price quite a lot. They're about half the amount cheaper than when they were first introduced. But by cheaper, I mean they're about $400 each. So they're not the cheapest, but they are cheaper. What am I even saying? <laughs> I'm just I'm just super excited that I have these fish. They're doing so well. They're so adorable. And uh, yeah, I just can't wait to see how they mature. But thank you so much for watching this video. I know it's a little bit more of a longer one, but I hope it was really educational and you can really appreciate just how beautiful these fish are and the amount of love that goes into producing even a single designer clown. But that's essentially it for me. So as always, stay happy, stay safe, stay Aussie Australian, Bodgy and the designers out.